Well, we're on our way. This is us. Out in the middle of nowhere. I can't say where, it's an undisclosed location. But I can tell you now, we're gonna have a good laugh. Got loads of stuff lined up. Got a bit of cooking. Gonna have a look at some Gucci kit and equipment. Gonna show you this area, because I'm gonna tell you, it is an absolutely picturesque round here. And like I say, although I can't tell you where I am, you're gonna enjoy the shots anyway. Absolutely superb. Great to be here. These lovely trees around here. And I'm gonna find somewhere really nice to sit down and do me cooking. Because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Enjoying yourself. What a place to do it. What a stunning venue. You're gonna enjoy today's show. And hopefully learn a few things too. Right. This is us, we're gonna go firm here. And while I get out all my monkeys and parrots, monkeys and parrots being army slang for bits and pieces, okay, why don't you look and have a look round? Because there is so much to see here, obviously I can't tell you where we are, because that'd be cheating. And you ain't allowed to know anyway, and I'd get in trouble if I did. So go on, bugger off, have a look around. I'm gonna get ready. <laughs> oh, I've got some stuff in here, I can tell you. Pots and pans, bits and pieces. By the time I put this lot together, we are gonna have such fun this afternoon, I can promise you, it really is gonna be a great laugh. Right, I'll tell you what else we're going to do today as well. Just as a little treat for yourselves. Every bloke has to have his toys. And one of his toys, the most important one, is his kettle, or his watch to me and you. And Luminox have sent me this one. Now, for less than 200 quid, all right, which is what this is roughly worth, it's an awesome piece of kit. Have a look at that, there you go. So we'll have a proper in-depth butchers at that in a bit, but uh, yeah, that's a start point, isn't it? And as if things couldn't get any better today, I've also got this survival kit, which we managed to get our hands on. I'll tell you all about it later, but there's loads of bits and pieces in here that'll get you out of an hole if you've dug yourself into one. All right, so here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Look, survival blanket straight off the bat. There's torches, pens. There's everything you need. I'll tell you what, I could, I could live for a month on there. Bear grills, I don't need you anymore, my son. I've got one of these. OK, then, after a great drive, then, we're finally here. Middle of nowhere, could be anywhere on the planet, but we're doing stuff and we're out in the outdoors. Now, as you know, an army marches on its stomach, which is great for me, because I've got plenty of it. But what I want to show you, OK, is how and why and where and when we do stuff, OK? Because I love my food so much, I want to take the best from what I did in the military and give it to you in a civilian format, OK? It's going to be fun and we're going to get involved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to deliver you meals. Five minute meals, simple stuff. Stuff that anybody can do with any equipment. Now you can go to the Gucci extremes and the alliest of all the equipment you could ever get, or you can go down to the pound shop, you can buy some pots and pans, a few cheap knives, and you can achieve exactly the same results. It doesn't matter. What I aim to show you is the whole thing. So what we've got today is the cheapest of the cheap option, all right? It's a get you going starter pack. I've got. Probably the cheapest Leverman's look-alike multi-tool I've ever seen. And I'm going to give you a tip for nothing on this one, all right? If you can't open these packs, because I need the knife to open the pack that's on the inside, get your finger in, all right, and give it a good old whip. You will get enough purchase in there to pull it open. Just be careful you don't cut yourself. And that's me health and safety cover, all right? Inside, I have this gleaming little multi-tool, all right? Never seen nothing like it in my life. I think it cost us the equivalent of about three quid. And there we go. It's not going to save the world. It's not going to build aircrafts and it's not going to go to the moon and back. But what it is going to do is get your dinner ready. All right? If a soldier's out on the ground, he needs to know he's going to get the right sustenance in his body. In here is a scientifically measured, calorific feast like no other. All right? I know that if I give this to a man, he can fight, perform his duties and do everything else he needs to do in the field, all right? So this is going to be our start point. And what I aim to do is take lessons from here and teach you how to put it into other formats because these are about 50 quid a pop. But the most important thing is a soldier doesn't have any time on his hands when it comes to eating. It's probably the last on his list of priorities. And so what I'm going to show you how to do is replicate that time span, probably about five minutes, to get this thing burnt and down your scoff. My 24-hour... Ration pack. It says it's menu one. And I have no idea what is in menu one when I get given this by my QM. So it's like a lottery. It's like a, it's like a lucky dip. It's like a dinner blind date. Because I'm excited now. I'm proper looking forward to opening this, all right? So I'm going for it, right? I'm going to dive in. I've got me, I've got me pound shop knife, all right? 
and I'm going to open this. What I'm not going to do is stick it down straight down through the middle because I don't want to damage nothing, right? So I'm going to go in at the top, all right? And there we go. I'm going to cut away from myself. And I've slashed my bag open already. Right, let's put my knife down because I can't wait to get in here. Let's have a butcher's, right. Number one out of the traps then, ginger pudding. Ginger pudding and ginger sauce, right? So I'm gonna put that down later because that's not that's not a breakfast time item. That's gonna be going down my face later on. Next then, I've got a pack which has got drinks and all sorts of stuff in it. In there as well is what I call the racing spoon. It's big enough, it's big enough to get your dinner down and it's also big enough to get in someone else's dinner and get their dinner down and all. Do you know what I mean? It's a proper racing spoon. It's what we need for cutting around the harbour area in, and the harbour area is an area where all the troops are sat around having their dinner, right? So there you go. Let's have a butcher's. I'm getting quite excited now. What have I got in here? Long grain rice. Nothing too exciting about that, but rice, there you go. Rice is rice, isn't it? Natural muesli. A natural muesli mix. You can see all this stuff's good stuff in it. I mean, this is going to fill me up. It's going to give me the calories I need. And if it tastes half decent, I'm a happy soldier. Morale's just gone through the ceiling, and I'm great, you know. What have I got in here? Chicken curry. A chicken curry. Who don't like a chicken curry? You shouldn't be in the army if you don't like chicken curry. That's a starter for you, isn't it? There you go. Right there, Phil said that one. Bean and pasta salad, all right? So you've had your curry, it's now time to get your five a day down your neck, isn't it? All right? What have we got here? I've got some sort of, this'll be a, this'll be a tropical flavor drink powder. This is like your rum punch without the rum, all right? This is your rum punch that goes in your water. It's got all your, 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 your diorolite type stuff in there that's gonna give you fluids back, right? Fluids are extremely important to a soldier. Cheddar cheese. Oh, you can feel the cheese in there, do you know what I mean? There's so many connotations with this cheese, it's unbelievable. I, could, I can just squirt that straight down my neck, all right, or I can stick it on a stick it on. A, oh, mate, honestly, we're gonna have fun with it. Right, here we go. Some tissues, because I get far too excited with this stuff. I've got to tell you, orange powder. There you go. So plenty of powder drinks, plenty of stuff. Because sometimes, don't forget, your water that you're going to use, you're going to purify yourself. And purified water, I'm going to tell you from experience, tastes like. <laughs> all right. So a little bit of orange powder in some purified water, it tastes like orange. <laughs> all right. Ain't so bad. Ain't that bad, is it? I've got some just nuts. You need some nuts if you're in the army. You need some nuts. Look at this, look. A fruit explosion. That is one of these things you can keep in your pocket, all right? And if you're feeling a little bit down, you're out on a long patrol, you're walking up the hill, all right? All of a sudden, you need a juice bunch. Bang! And it goes. You're going to burn that as soon as you put it in your body, all right? That's going to give you a boost, OK? So if you've just finished a, a section attack, or if you've just walked up a hill, all right, bang that in. You're good to go. You're hot to trot. There we go. Right, we've got an oatmeal block. Now, I can show you some tricks with these oatmeal blocks. If you save them up, you can make a really nice porridge. But we're not going to cover that today. That's your oatmeal block. A cereal bar. Now, how about that for a plain Jane cereal bar? That really is, isn't it? That is the plainest of the plain. That is like, that's saying, don't eat me, Phil. But I'm telling you what, I am going to eat you, because it's a cereal bar, and it's full of all sorts of stuff. And it's cookies and cream flavour. A cookies and cream flavour cereal bar. Packaging could have done with a little bit more, but there you go. I'm not going to hold you to ransom. I've got the 24-hour ration feedback and prize draw entry form. <laughs> M-O-D, you are always spoiling me, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? So I'm sat in my trench in Afghanistan, and I'm going to fill this out. I might as well give that to the Taliban, hadn't I? <laughs> and then just to round me off, I've got some hot chocolate flavour and mint drink. Right, that's, that's going to be... Oh, that's going to save your soul one day, isn't it? You're going to be sat there, you're going to boil your water, and I'm going to teach you how to make a one-handed brew later, because I did make a one-handed brew during a firefight once, OK? I'm going to teach you how to do all that sort of stuff. All right, a one-handed brew with your chocolate, in it goes, morale in a bag, right there. Hot chocolate with mint. Who don't like that? Right, there you go. So, the last thing to come out of the bag. Peanut butter. If you don't like peanut butter again, you've got no business on this planet, all right? This really is, this re I'm only joking. This really is, the, this is another one that you can just nip the corner off, stick it straight in you, and the energy goes straight in, boom. It goes straight into your blood, straight around your heart, and straight out the other side, punching and fighting and kicking. There is one more thing, and I thought they forgot to put it in. A little bottle of hot chilli sauce, all right? Everything. Everything, and I mean everything, tastes good with Tabasco. And what we've got here, all right, they've ripped off Tabasco a little bit. They haven't got Tabasco, all right, but it's the same sort of thing. It's hot sauce. In a... Everything tastes with hot sauce. So if you don't like your ginger, if you don't like your rice, if you don't like your curry, if you can't stand your beans and don't like your vegetables, stick some of that on it, it'll all go down. And at the end of all this, we've got a bag to put all our gas back in at the end, all right? So the good old MOD, they thought of absolutely anything. So there we go. 
So all these items, all I simply need to do is boil some hot water, all right, and put the bag in and boil it while it's going along, all right? That's as simple as cooking gets, isn't it? So what I'm going to teach you to do over the next few months is make the boil in the bags yourself to bring out to the field to cook. But we'll look at some interesting stuff while we're doing it, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll always come out looking as alley as we can. Now, if you don't know what alley is, and you probably wouldn't do unless you served in the parachute regiment, all right? Alliness is what saves lives. Alliness is being cool. Alliness is Gucci. Alliness is having the latest watch, the latest knife, the latest car. Whatever it is that's on the market that's cool, you're Ali if you've got it. A good soldier utilises all his time in the field for the good and benefit of the mission that he's on. Now, my mission today is to entertain you and to educate you slightly. So what I thought I would do is teach you the regimental ethos. Now, the regimental ethos is what David Sterling, who founded the SAS, wrote in the sand all those years back in 1940-odd when he was forming the SAS from the Long Range Desert Group. How's it worked then? Well, listen, there's four things that he said his soldiers needed to have, and number one was an unrelenting pursuit of excellence. He wanted soldiers not to rest on their laurels, but to forever be striving to be better, bigger, stronger, faster, and more effective. Number two, then, he needed soldiers to have self-discipline, the highest standards of self-discipline, all right? It's no good. I can pull the wool over anybody's eyes. I can't pull them over my own, all right? So to have decent self-discipline, you have to be reliable and you need reliable soldiers. I need to know that everybody's doing their job, even if I'm not watching them. We then moved into what we called a classless, but not rankless society. Every man is the same as every other man. Every man has his worth. It's not to say that because he's private and the lowest of the pile, we don't listen to him, because he might be the only man in a firefight that sees the enemy. All right, so we listen to everybody and we treat everybody's thoughts with respect and integrity and, and, and we treat we, 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 listen to, we listen to what's been said and, and make our opinions formed around what we see. That said, we do need rank. We do need to know who the boss is. And we do need to know where our orders are coming from. So it's a classless but not rankless society. Very important. And the last thing that David Sterling required was for men to be humble. You need to be humble. You need to, to understand that all men are equal. And you need not to look down on anybody. And somebody taught me something years ago and he said... Judge a man by the way he treats the fella who can do nothing for him, all right? Remember those words, because they're very important. And the last final thing that David Sterling said was, you need to have a sense of humour. If you're not enjoying your work, if you haven't got a sense of humour, if you can't pluck, pluck positivity out of the sky at any given opportunity, you might just be in the wrong job. Anyway, that's enough for my thoughts on this week. I'm going to cover loads more stuff like that with you in the coming episodes. My favourite time of the day now, it's dinner time. And although this just might be boiling water in a couple of bags, there's still a small routine that I get myself into. Number one, I'm turning off the, I'm turning off the heat source right now, OK? That's got to where it needs to be, so the heat source is gone. All right, very important to get that off as soon as you can. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is remove the lid, and the two bags are going to come out. Now, they are hot, all right? They are proper hot. So I'm putting them there. I'm not opening them straight away, all right, because I don't want to lose the heat, because the most important thing I'm going to do right now is make my brew, OK? So I've got the three sachets, all which came out of there. I'm going to empty one sachet after the other into my mug, like so, OK? Making sure that the gas goes back in the bag as I do so, all right? Sugar if you want sugar. In it goes, nice and quick, all right? This is the way to, this is the way to have your dinner. And in goes the whitener, all right? There we go. The water is going to come in next. All right, there we go. In with the water. There you go, you can see the brew's making itself already. I don't even have to make the brew. It makes itself. And then the lid can go straight on this. And that brew will stay hot for quite some time in these little, in these little cups. And I can shake it up, all right? So leave a little bit at the top, just so you've got enough plate to shake it up in. And then your brew's done. I don't have to worry about that. That can go away. That can be drank later if I want to. So there's my brew done already. I'm keeping it all nice and tidy. So if we do get bumped now, I can just pick it all up and go, can't I? Okay? The next thing I'm going to do then, I've got a bag of curry and a bag of rice, all right? Now, I could eat the bag of curry and the bag of rice separately, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the curry. There we go. Putting the gash again away as soon as I, as soon as I get in there, all right? I'm going to put that down by my foot. I'm going to put that up on my foot here. I'm going to open the rice. This is proper steaming, this rice is. Perfect rice every time, without Uncle Ben. That's a touch, isn't it? And I 
I'm just going to tip the rice into there. All right. Now it's all in one bag. So I've already got rid of some of my rubbish before I've even started. I'm then going to fold all this over. I'm going to come into here. I'm going to get out my spork, my issued racing spoon, and I'm just going to mash all this up a bit. All right. There we go. So I'm making a bit of a biryani as we go. <laughs> you know, biryani, biryani Sundays. On, on, when I used to go on the ships, on a Sunday, if you was working with the Indians, it was a biryani day. They don't have a Sunday dinner, they have a biryani. There you go. Something new, something new is learned every day by everyone, isn't it? There you go. Biryani's nice. And there we go. Hot biryani. Mmm. I'm going to fail you. All right. Even by Big Phil's standards, everything needs a bit of Tabasco. And this one's quite bonkers, actually. It's called Hot Diggity Dog. <laughs> Hot diggity dog! It better be hot diggity dog now, I'll tell you. All right, there we go. We're in. We're open. Oh dear, that's quite some. That's quite some sauce going in there. I don't know if I'll do the whole lot in a one. <laughs> I'll do half of it. Here we go. Stand by, stand by. We're in. We're up and running, and we've got our hot diggity dog sauce in there. Hmm. Oh well. It ain't rocket science. But it is nice. <laughs> mm. Absolutely spot on. Nothing like having your dinner outdoors, especially when you've done it yourself. Right, it's bonnet brief time. And this week's bonnet, well, it's an overfinch. You know I love my Land Rovers, and the Range Rover is at the top of the pile. Obviously, we used them on the counter terrorism team all them years back. It's a famous bit of kit within the regiment. We've had the pinkies. We've always had Land Rovers, Range Rovers, all that sort of stuff. They are a top piece of kit. And it's my probably my preferred weapon of choice in the field when it comes to vehicles. It really is. So that's the bonnet. Look at that overpins as well. What a tremendous job they've done on this thing. And I've got to tell you, I might even show you underneath that later because that is phenomenal under there. That's like that's on another level of large, all right? I'm large, that big, all right? Okay, so, right. From the bonnet brief, we're going to bust straight into Big Phil's resupply bag. All right, this is my ammunition SF resupply bag here. And in here, every week, I'm going to have a few bits of kit which will make your life just so much better. They really will. Even if it's just by looking at it, it'll make your life better. Because you can have a smile like I can. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go straight in. I've got a watch in there this week, all right? And I've got a survival kit. Let's have a look what we get out first. We'll grab the, we'll grab the watch out first. Here we go. Luminox. Less than 200 quid, this thing. SF, SF approved. This is the Delta one. I'm sure the SF have approved it, and if they didn't, they would do. I'm telling you, because it's, it's a carbon-type watch. If you watch these figures at night, these things light up like the sun. I'm telling you, you could use that as a torch. It's insane. I'm going to stick it on, all right, so you can have a proper look at what it's like. Off goes the old G-Shock, the old faithful. And on goes Mr. Luminox. Here we go. It's got a nice solid feel to it, thick rubber strap. Feels right on the arms, you know what I mean? There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse for me than a watch that don't feel right, do you know what I mean? When it's all flopping about and you've got to do it upright. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody wearing one of these nice watches and having it flopping around his hands. It just ain't right. It ain't right. So there we go. That's the Luminox. I think you'll agree. It does look pretty decent. As long as it can tell the time, we'll be laughing, won't we? So the Luminox goes back in the box. God, I'm busting out some rhymes for you today. Should have been a rapper, shouldn't I? Here we go. Let's bung that away. In you go, Luminox. Get rid of that. Now let's go in for... Let's go in through the top of the man bag this week. Let's not even undo it. See that? Nice little, nice little opening. I can get into it. And in here, I've got a survival box. Right now, this could be taken anywhere. This could be in your backpack if you want to go hill walking. You could stick it in your car. You could put it in... You could take this anywhere. You could just leave it in your house. There's umpteen times I've been in my house where I thought to myself, I wish I had one of those, and I ain't had one. So, here we go. Let's have a butcher's. What's in it? Right, here we go. Straight jumping out of me, a survival blanket. There you go. Umpteen things you can do with this. I'm not going to go through them all now, but obviously it's got reflective capabilities. It has got a life-saving capability. Don't forget, shock kills, okay? This thing draped over the shoulder. Someone's using shock. It's a lifesaver, all right? I'm not going to go right into that straight away. I've got a saw. There we go. I've got one of those saws on a chain, all right? Cut anything down, that will. We'll try it later. I've got a torch. How many times have you been crawling under the sink or looking under the dashboard of the car because you've lost something outside and you ain't got a torch? Well, you have now because it's in my box. <laughs> these pens, these pens are phenomenal, okay? It is a pen, 
Now there's been a million times in my life when I should have had a pen and I haven't, so now I've got one. But you can break glass with this. There's lots of little tricks I can do with this. I can use this as a coubaton. You'd like to know how, wouldn't you? I'll show you one day. Got a little multi-tool, card type tool. Take bottle tops off, saw things down, chop things up. Little bit of cord on here, spare bootlaces. You know the score. I don't have to show you everything, do I? Come on. Carabiner. If you don't want a carabiner in your life, you shouldn't be alive. Here we go. We can start some fires now. We've got the old... There we go. We'll get a few things off. We'll get a few sparks off. We will get some sparks off that. There you go. And then we've got a knife. And on this knife in particular, okay, we've got the J-knife capability, which if you were trying to get out of that and it was going underwater, you'd be able to slice straight through, straight through your, um, your, your, your seatbelt, and it would be a natural lifesaver. So it's not, it's not just a knife, 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 knife. It's a knife that does other things. And with that J-knife capability on there, it's absolutely superb. And I will, I will at some stage show you how that operates properly because that really is a lifesaver. So you've got that for breaking the windows out in your car and that for getting your seatbelt off. There's one in the dashboard of my car, I can tell you. Right? And then the final thing for that one, if you, if you need to draw attention to it, I don't actually need to draw attention to myself because when I'm wearing this, everybody's looking. But just in case they're not, there's a whistle. There you go. How cool is that? All in a tiny little box, stowed away. You never have to think about it until the day of the race. And then you can bust it out and save your life. There we are. Big Phil's bonnet brief. Take something from that. Might save your life one day. Back in the land of the living. You've seen what I can do with an issued ration pack. Now, let's see what I can dig out of someone's shop. There we go. Uh, Rush, right, you all right? Uh, yeah, you good? Yeah, not bad, mate. Yeah. I'll have a butcher's round. Yeah, do. Right, so, as you've seen, all I'm doing is trying to pick ingredients that I can basically make up in my own kitchen, stuff in a bag, and then boil again once I'm out in the field. So what we've got here, straight off the bat, you can see we've got pastas, we've got rices, we can cook those up, we can stick them straight in the bag, they're good to go. They're no good on their own. What can I put with them? Tomato sauce, I've got spaghetti hoops, hot dog sausages, who don't like sausage and beans? And I've got both here in a wanna. There you go, that's a meal on its own, isn't it? Straight in the bag, tip them in. So we'll have a butchers at that, look. All the sauces, all the spices, all the bells and whistles, puddings, we got rice pudding, we got custard, we got biscuit ensembles, you name it, we can do it. And I'm going to show you a lot in the next few weeks. Here we go, sausages and beans. So that's next. That's the next show to take care of. Russ, can I stick these on my tap, mate? Yeah, no worries. There you go. What a man. I'm out of here. I'll see you later on.